questions as we go along. So chapter 18, as usual, we start with section 2. Uh, chapter 18 is the interrogatory system, which is the skin. Um, the skin, very important to the elderly in the nursing home because of the problem with skin breakdown, pressure ulcers, skin tears, uh, wounds. So it's very important that we understand how to take care of the skin. So this system, one of the systems in the body that uh, we have to learn as part of this program. Uh, some definitions, integument, which means the skin, is the natural protective covering of the body. There are two layers of the skin. You have the dermis and you have the epidermis. The epidermis is the outer layer of the two layers and the dermis is the inner layer. The linocytes, those are cells in the skin that produces the uh, substance that contains the pigmentation, me um, uh, melanin. Melanin is what gives everybody a skin color, you know, that you know, you know makes your skin black or make your skin white or Chinese or something. So that, um, it's melanin that gives skin the pigmentation. So this is the inner layer of the two layers of the skin that we talked about at the beginning. So the integumentary system consists of the skin, the hair, nails, sebaceous glands, sweat glands, nerve endings, so we said the skin is the natural protective covering of the body and it's also the largest organ in the body. So this is a quiz question you're going to get tomorrow, I mean on, on Monday. Which of the following organs is the largest organ in the body? The answer is the skin. All right. Here's a picture of the skin. You have the hair, sweat glands, the, the epidermis, the dermis, subcutaneous tissue. Those of you that did this CMT class, when we gave the injection for the insulin, the needle had to come into this section of the skin for the medication to work. So this is your, which was uh, uh, a route of administration called subcutaneous means the needle has to come in here. Now, those of you that have done the PPD test, um, the needle only went under the skin, under the dermis, and blew up that balloon on your skin that the doctor will then look to see if you have TB or not. So that needle only came right here. So functions of the integumentary system, we said it's a natural protective covering of the body, largest organ, covers and protects the body, and the skin is also a sensory organ. So we know that um, it protects against bacteria, uh, prevent loss of uh, water, regulates body temperature, responds to heat and cold. So if you're standing outside and it's very cold, the skin will send a message and then will, the temperature will adjust to accommodate the body because of the uh, outside temperature. So the skin also excretes waste products like sweat. Also helps produce vitamin D. If you stand out in the sun for a while, um, the skin will produce vitamin D to the sun. So how does it affect the elderly? You know, we're learning all these systems to understand how each system affects the elderly as they get older. Like I said earlier, this, this system is very important because of skin problems that the elderly people have. Normal changes of aging in the integumentary system, the amount of fats and collagen decreases. So the amount of fat you have will decrease the elastic fibers will become loose. So like 
right now my skin I guess I'm not that old yet but I'm getting there for the elderly if you pinch their skin like this it will stay up it will stay pinched um, skin becomes drier um, the hair and nail grows slowly right now if you cut your hair before you know it, it grows back but as you get old at, at that age it doesn't grow back that fast so skin becomes thinner protective fatty layers become thinner the hair thins away turns gray like mine brown spots may appear on the skin so you know part of the skin this system is to understand what happens when there's a burn um, you know what causes burn well it could be fire or hot liquid or warm water that's why before you use water on the resident you must make sure that you test the water then they test the water before um, you do say perineal care or food care or any kind of care that involves water warm water um, you have to avoid burning them if you're serving them hot uh, tea or hot um, coffee make sure it's not too hot you know so that it doesn't burn them um, there are different types of burns it depends on the layer how deep the burn penetrated the skin you have first degree burn second degree burn third degree burn um, and so forth some burns may require surgery um, you know it definitely will cause the residents health to deteriorate because now they have additional problem on top of the problem they had before they will take pain medication um, so be very gentle when you're moving them knowing that you know they have burns we had a resident in my facility the house exploded and she was burned um, from head to toe if you know she was the hospital, they did lots of surgery to restore her face. Then they sent us to us for rehab and I mean, we saw the news when the house caught fire and she was in it. Um, other people were out at the time. So, um, so we have to handle her, you know, gently. Like that type of resident, you know, we talked about type, different types of shower the other day. When she doesn't need no um, shower bath or tub bath or all of that she just need a partial clean up of you know the face and pit and, and perineal area so you don't make the skin problem worse then there's scabies um, scabies a contagious skin infection caused by um, mites um, getting into the skin and then you will see like pimple-like irritations and rashes and um, it's itching and sores what causes it we said mites that enters the skin will lay some eggs in there and they have the same symptoms most skin issues have will have rash and itching sore and so on Shingles is an issue. It's a viral infection caused by the same virus that causes chickenpox. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between shingles and chickenpox. Results in pain, itching, rashes. So again, shingles, the same virus that causes chickenpox. Can occur in anyone who has had chickenpox before. Um, how you know somebody have um, shingles, you see there will be painful itching and rashes that will appear all over. They will have fever and chills. There will be pain that lasts a long time. The virus is spread when um, a blister forms. So this person will be on isolation. And you have to be careful when you're dealing with them. Because those, uh, those blisters, when they bust open, you have to protect yourself so that Open wound just means a wound, a wound that has broken the skin and you can see uh, either uh, blood or pus coming out, a drainage coming out. 
So for example, if you have a boil that has not opened up yet, that's a closed one. Once it opens up and starts bleeding, that's an open one. So a bruise is a blue-black discoloration because of uh, like uh, somebody hit somebody and might create a bruise. It's also called contusion. The one thing with this system, and I'm going to kind of show you different names here, um, the, the specific names of what kind of skin condition that the resident have is for charging us to document and be and be accurate about it. If you come across uh, something on the skin and you don't know what to call it, but it's an abrasion uh, or a lesion, um, you know, well, we know what gangrene is when um, the skin is dead, there's no blood flow, normally to the feet. You'll see that it will black, you know, most likely the person will get amputation, otherwise it will keep coming, the dead skin will keep coming up until it affect the whole body, so they will cut off that, the last good part where blood is still flowing, if somebody has gangrene. But if you see anything that you're not sure of, report to the charge nurse and dermatitis, inflammation of the skin. There are so many names that you're going to come across. Cellulitis, don't get confused and you don't need to know which was the difference between one and the other. Um, if, you, if you see anything that is not normal on the skin, report to the charge nurse, let the charge nurse document it correctly. Psoriasis, um, some of this stuff that was meant for the charge nurses. Um, so, once there's a problem on the skin, you're going to know there's swelling, there's a bruise, there's discoloration, that then there's a problem. When the skin is normal, you see it, you know that's a normal skin. But there's nothing, you know, there's no redness, there's no discoloration, there's no swelling, there's no drainage. Um, but once there's a problem, you will know to report to the child, to the child nurse, another fungal infection that causes red, scaly patch, you know. Um, what um, contagious heart bump that is caused by a virus. Because you should be uh, uh, be alert and be careful if you see anything on the skin. Uh, you don't know if it's something that's contagious or not. So report to your child nurse um, quickly. Skin cancer. If somebody has skin cancer, they would have been already been diagnosed with skin cancer. So it's not like you can, any, anybody can tell just by looking at somebody's skin that, and say the person has a skin cancer. But the person might be getting um, a treatment like chemotherapy. Um, so just be careful to report anything that you see. Um, pressure also, ulcers. Um, obesity increases the risk for certain type of skin problem, okay? Such as pressure ulcer. Um, skin infections such as cellulitis, excess facial or body hair, slow wound healing. So that's why we, you know, encourage people to lose weight and stay fit. Pressure points. Pressure points are areas of the body that are likely, that, that carries the pressure of the body, that carries the weight. Um, so if you're lying on the side, or if you're sitting like, not, not, like right now, we're all sitting on the chair, right? So our butt is our pressure point because all the pressure is going down on that chair. So imagine um, a resident who sits on a wheelchair the whole day, um, the butt will get sore and painful. So that's the pressure points. Uh, we're gonna see another, a picture that tells you, that points out um, pressure points more clearly. Bony prominences are areas of the body where you can feel the bone, like your, 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 your elbow, your knee, your knuckles. You can feel the bone right there, but you can't feel the bone here in your thigh. Your muscle, you cannot feel. You cannot feel the bone easily. So those 
only private nurses have to be protected, you know, to avoid um, pressure ulcers. Necrosis means uh, dead cells. Again, pressure ulcer is a serious problem in a nursing home. Um, it doesn't take much for residents to have pressure ulcer. It's also called uh, pressure sore, decubitus ulcer, and bed sores. So here's a picture of pressure points that you should be very careful with. So, so this person is lying on the side. You can see all the parts of the body that is on the bed are all absorbing the pressure of the whole body, the weight of the whole body. From the side of the head, sometimes they're lying on, on one side before you know they wake up, that side is swollen because everything went down that way. They were not turned to the side. The ear, the shoulder, the hip, um, the greater trochanter, the knee, the ankle. So as in this picture, when you when you put a resident to bed, make sure that you cushion all those pressure points. So the ankle is on the, is resting on something. Um, it could be a small pillow. Um, there's a pillow here, there's a pillow here. Um, so, so if somebody's lying on a supine position, you want to make sure that the heels are not rubbing on the bed. Put, some, put a pillow there to elevate those knees. Otherwise, before you know it, there's a big sore on that heel. If you look in your book, open to the, to the, to the page where you have those sores, those um, pressure ulcers that have stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, and take a look at what could happen in, in just a matter of days. Right there, uh, page 334. Page 334. You there? Mm -hmm. You see that? You see the top one? It was just ordinary redness. It wasn't reported, and nothing was done about it. By the next day, guess the stage two. By the third day, guess the stage three. By the fourth day, it becomes a big open wound. And imagine, especially if it's located around the buttocks area, when they poop, it goes in there. When they pee, it goes in there. Before you know it, the whole butt has been torn apart. And so just think about, you took your parents to the nursing home. Two weeks later, they tell you that she has a stage four Why? She wasn't being turned. Uh, maybe it wasn't being fed properly. Um, she was allowed to sit all day in one position. She was um, not, you know, proper skin care wasn't provided. So you have to watch out for those redness. When it happens quickly, there are several ointments. We, at my job, we use Carmosetine. We also use um, A and D ointments. They're very good with um, taking care of that redness. Then we have to turn them. You know, the standard is that we turn them every two hours so that we, we you know, distribute the pressure. So stage two, partial thickness, skin loss, involving the epidermis and the dermis. Then by, by the third stage and the fourth stage, you, you don't want, I mean, just look at those pictures, you know, you feel very bad that your resident had such wound and you know, since you are, you were one of the people taking care of the resident, it means that the responsibility is you're partly responsible too. So you have to make sure that your residents are turned frequently, check their skin, give them good skin care. Why should every resident's skin be inspected each time that care is provided? To prevent that, to prevent the pressure also. To find out if they are at stage one, which is just redness, so we can start treating it early. Um, that their diet needs to be changed. We have to make sure they're drinking well um, if they have one, so that the wound can heal. But like I said, prevention is better than cure. Always be on alert when anytime you're taking care of a resident. So 
what are you looking for from the skin? You're looking for pale, white, redness, uh, gray, purple color, um, dry, cracked, flaky skin, torn skin, blisters, bruises, wounds, rashes, um, any kind of burning, itching, swelling, wet skin, broken skin. You know, the wound is getting worse. Maybe it was a small one before, or a small skin tear. But it's getting bigger. You have to report that. Risk factors. You know, what, what are the risk factors? What could contribute to pressure ulcer? Immobility. They're sitting in one position all day. They're lying in one position all night. The night shift people are in the day room sitting there, maybe sleeping. You know, or watching a movie, or be on their phone. Four hours will go by, they have not even gone to turn the resident. Some of them are lying on their urine for hours and now all their poop. All that is eating into the skin and, you know, wrinkled in it. Make sure you're, you're, when you make that bed, the, it's wrinkle free. Um, make sure there are no crumbs or little stuff on the bed. Um, by nutrition and dehydration. If they're not eating well, the body's not able to heal the skin faster. They're not drinking enough also. Like I said earlier, you know, they're incontinent of urine and uh, feces, and maybe they've had a bowel movement and they've urinated and they're sitting on it. So you don't want that to happen. Again, we talk about reporting changes to your child nurse as soon as possible. So. Anything that you know is not normal with the skin, you have to report it. Like I said earlier, a resident should be repositioned at least every two hours. Now, you need to ask the resident in a wheelchair to change their position. Every 15 minutes, try to adjust their position a little bit, you know. Um, even you know, when I'm driving a long distance, every hour, the recommendation is to stop and you know, take a break every hour so that you'll be alert also there'll be you know your blood circulation will be you know, better instead of just sitting in, in one position same thing when, when i'm flying home you know i have to get up frequently to stretch my legs and imagine somebody who cannot get up in a wheelchair uh, avoid rubbing skin against surfaces during transfer or repositioning so that you don't cause a skin tear. Um, again, keep linens dry. Perform range of motion. Um, if there are special positioning devices, like a wedge, that you're supposed to use to keep them in one position, then you should use those devices. Use pillows to separate the skin like we saw in the picture. There is a, a skill that is called positioning a resident on the side. It requires you to use three additional pillow, one to wedge the pack, one to put under the arm, another one to put between the legs. So we'll practice that uh, later. Since bath is a warm soak of the perineal area, sometimes when it has, a doctor has to order it, it's, uh, it's used to reduce uh, swelling and pain if there is one in that area. So sometimes we may need to apply a warm compress or a cold compress on the skin. So heat relieves pain and muscle tension. Cold helps stop bleeding and prevents swelling. This is gonna be on your quiz. You know, heat relieves pain and muscle tension. Cold helps stop bleeding. For example, if somebody was having nosebleed, you will apply, put some ice in, um, and then put on your forehead. We'll see a picture. Moisture strengthens the effects of heat and cold. It is important to observe for excessive redness and blister or numbness if you are applying any kind of warm or cold application. Um, how to apply those things? You can read that in your textbook. But the one thing about um, warm compress, it should not be warmer than 105 degrees um, Fahrenheit. And another thing you should know is that it should not stay there 
about 20 minutes. So um, you, should, you should remove the compress after 20 minutes. So let's move on to this is administering a warm soak. Um, sometimes you might need to soak their feet in warm, in warm water. Again, just remember this number, 105. That that's whether they're taking a bath, they're being they're being washed. The the temperature of the water should not exceed 105 degrees. It's going to be in your test. So this K pipe um, scene is done applied. That's a, that's done by the nurses. So only so you only do procedures that are allowed in your facility, like those warm and cold compress in my facility. Charge nurses to do it, but if you're alone in a house and you're doing one on one, and maybe your president is bleeding, you, you can apply the warm compress to to the forehead to the, to stop the bleeding. So six baths uh, we said earlier. Um, cold, cold compress. Hmm? Cold. It's not cold. 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 cold compress to stop bleeding. Um, six baths helps with circulation uh, in, the, in the pelvic area. Right, those six baths will be performed by the charge nurse. So, the more, the more things to remember if you're applying ice, um, the cold compress, you must wrap it in a, in a towel or a washcloth before you place it on the area that you need to place. And, I, and same thing here, make sure you remove it after 20 minutes. Now, discuss non-sterile and sterile dressings. The, the sterile dressing, like that one we saw in the book, will require a sterile dressing. So a sterile dressing is done by the child nurse. Just means that the procedure is more advanced that requires Using all sterile equipment, the glove, the um, the cleanser, the whatever is going to be used, the dressing, the t everything has to be sterile. Whereas non-sterile, maybe maybe there's a small cut that the resident have, you can just take a bandaid and put on it. That's a non-sterile dressing, so that you know just to stop the bleeding until the charge nurse comes. So that's, um, if you see a question um, that asks whether a, whether a CNA can do a, a sterile dressing, the answer is no. CNA can do a non-sterile dressing. Okay. That's an example of a non-sterile dressing. So again, we're not going to go into a sterile dressing because the, the nurses and the doctors and the wound, wound nurses, they handle that. You have to know how, you have to have special gloves that came in a pack, you know, um, that's sterile. The gloves that we're using is non-sterile. So that's done by the nurses. That's the end. Any question? No question?